In 2015, a 4chan discussion spawned rumors of a strange program used at multiple corporations. It was said that those who mentioned the program online vanished from the internet without a trace. Today, we discuss the fact and fiction behind the puzzling story of Erotus. This is Red Web. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to A Mystery Monday here on Red Web. We're diving back into another internet-centric mystery. I'm Trevor Collins. This is Alfredo Diaz. Hey, uh, oh, people mentioning stuff on the internet and disappearing. Mm-hmm. Mm, that's why you got to be careful what you say. Yeah, and it's, it's almost appropriate, Alfredo, that because of the holidays, uh, a lot of things moving around, we're actually doing this recording. This is our first one back at home. Yes, we are. Just to, you know, <laughs> as people do the holiday business. Uh, so it's only appropriate that we are back on the internet for an internet kind yeah, of theme. I was saying this is uh, how we birthed <laughs> the show. So right here we are again. We can't play footsie, you know, betwixt the uh, the no. mysteries anymore. Yeah. Um, That's how the show really got its, its energy going. <laughs> That's how we really knew we were onto something. <laughs> when uh, when I walked in with the Crocs and socks and we started t- oh, footsieing around a little bit. But no, this one's really interesting because, as I mentioned, and we've talked about 4chan on a lot of different mysteries, but I feel like I might owe it to a lot of listeners to answer perhaps what 4chan is. It's essentially Reddit. And if you don't know what Reddit is, it's it's essentially an old school uh, internet forum. It's just a discussion board. And 4chan is, is obviously much older. It has a lot of questionable topics and places on it, so I wouldn't encourage you to go Uh, reading around the website, but it is something where a lot of mysteries get discussed, a lot of topics get openly brought up there, because they have a paranormal board on 4chan, which is just called X. That's They kind of have a a letter for all of their different boards. Interesting. Yeah. Yeah, um, I just... No, a ton of weird stuff comes from 4chan, so I just stay away from it. Yeah, that's that's safest, you know. <laughs> but yeah, this one's really interesting. So what what we're gonna do is, uh, you know, there's not really a way to go into the theories on this particular one. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through kind of the story of Oratus, how it kind of got its origins, and then how it got it kind of grew out from there. And there's other stories that feel like they tie in really nicely to this mystery. And then there's an investigation to discuss, but really it's one of those mysteries that you either believe it or you don't, it's real or it's not. And obviously ARG is also in play. Like, mm-hmm. is this an ARG? Like all the right. all the mysteries we talk about that don't really have theories, ARG tends to be just one of those. But before we dive into this mystery, I want to remind everybody the holidays are upon us. And as of the release of this episode, if you want to get some Red Web Task Force merchandise as a gift for your friends or for your family members or for yourself, you have two days. December 15th is the cutoff because that is going to get the shipping to you prior to the holidays really kicking off. So if that's something you want to do, go to store.roosterteeth.com. We have the Task Force uh, jacket, which is really cool. We have a field notebook. Dude, that jacket is awesome. Awesome. I just got mine in the mail today as of recording this, and it, it is, is a my cool new favorite looking jacket. It's so cool. We also have an updated task force badge for those of you who have been representing. We have an all red one. Uh, we, we have a couple little things trickling through the store. We also have some Mothman propaganda, the unsung hero, the, un, the misunderstood hero, Mothman. So if you want to get that on a loose fit shirt or on a poster, those are all available. So uh, yeah, those are out there. Store.roosterteeth.com. But without further ado, Let's dive into Erratus. So I'm going to take you way, way, way back. Okay, Fredo? Get ready for some time travel. We're going deep into the past, into history. Every time you say what the mystery is, Erratus, I just feel like it's like a high-end erotic store or something. Uh, uh, Yeah, I feel dirty (laughs) saying it. I feel like, you know, I feel like I'm sneaking into the back of the blockbuster (laughs) through the bead door where all the beads hang down. You need a VIP membership into some erotic (laughs) store or something. It's weird. Yeah. Welcome to Erratus. But like, it's clean, you know what I mean? Like, right. I don't know. It's <laughs> like, it's clean. It's like the Apple store of, of sex goods. Yeah. 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 Well, that's a good way to put it. Actually. <laughs> well, I was being facetious. This is not very far in the past. This is November 19th, 2015. There was a discussion. Holy hell. Yeah. Very in our backyard. So there's a discussion that started on the paranormal board of 4chan known as X. This discussion was titled simply, 
spoopy work stories. And as the title suggests, and get a giggle out, I, I like that spoopy kind of softens the blow, doesn't it? Yeah, it makes it not as frightening when people are going missing. You just call it spoopy. Yeah. But these folks were looking for paranormal stories from other users' workplaces, right? Because they felt that their particular workplace was haunted. So about a week later, on the 26th, there was another anonymous poster that came through and started talking about their friend's workplace story. They described their friend as a super interesting chick, somebody who was in a band and sometimes homeless. She was a temporary worker at a soon-to-be-closing company that was very disorganized. This company's programmers created a payroll software or something of that nature, but only had one employee left when the Anon's friend was still working there. So already we have a very interesting situation happening at whatever this company yeah, is. Yeah, that, that is okay. There's a lot just being thrown out. I mean, yeah, lots of unpack. This is someone who's kind of like in an unfortunate situation, you know, sometimes homeless. This company is falling apart. I guess there's one employee left to keep it all uh, floating until, you know, just maintenance, maybe. Yeah, I, mean, I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, the, there's maybe like a cutoff date or something like that. And this one employee is just kind of maintenance, like as, as minimal as, as possible. Mm -hmm. That's where my mind is at with that. Um, but OK, payroll service. Yeah, so that's the, that, that's a good point, is there's a lot of information, so I'll give you the things to grasp onto for now. The fact that we have this really disorganized, weird company, but specifically creating this payroll software, we have IT programmers working on something. And the two employees left, right? Anand's friend and this other employee, the two of them were packing boxes, and her tape gun, as she was packing these boxes up, said the word erratus on it, E-R-R-A-T-A-S. And it didn't have the department's name on it. It had that on it. Wait, the tape gun, like the actual, or I mean, we're talking about like, like when the, you're packing the, up boxes and it goes, yeah, the, you load the tape up into the, the kind of like, you know, with the handle and stuff, the tape mm -hmm. gun. Yeah. And the tape gun said Aratus. Yeah. Weird. Very weird. It seems okay. arbitrary knowing it where we're going. It just seems so random. Yeah, exactly. Right. Knowing where we're going, it's just like, oh, okay. It's a company that makes little like hacking tools and stuff like maybe that. or maybe it's just i don't know so it's worth mentioning that erratus is the latin word for error so maybe it's like erratus or something i, I don't know how to properly oh. pronounce but they both start with air err -R to air right to make a mistake but when she pointed this out she pointed it out to her to her other co-worker and the programmer told her to get rid of the tape gun and to not mention it to any supervisors so obviously this is standing out now it's very strange oh because this feels like something very vanilla, something very bland. Like, oh, this has a weird name on it. I've never heard of this brand. And they're like, yo, don't talk about that. Get rid of it. Yeah. Uh, okay. I mean, obviously, you know, the human mind, you're going to be very curious. You're going to ask about it. You're going to want to try it. and in investigate. Yeah. Yeah. Well, a year previously, it turns out that this coworker of hers had written code that would flag any user who used the search term erratus, and those who got flagged were subsequently fired. Oh, okay. So now a lot of questions are just raised, right? Like, yeah, because then because then you're using time and resources to do something like that. It's not right. It's not like the simplest thing to do. Not overly complex, but like that you're you're definitely. I don't know. Like, if that's a joke, boy, oh boy, you're uh, too far, right? Because you're firing right. people off of it. Well, why are we punishing people for using a dead language? Maybe somebody who just wants to sound sophisticado and they want to use a little bit of Latin. This is so intriguing already. Yeah. Well, let's flash forward a month as of real time, as far as the storytelling is concerned. December 19th of that very same year, happy birthday past me. That this was a month after this paranormal discussion kicked off, and Erratus once again made an appearance on 4chan. Now, it's also worth mentioning 4chan is a place for anonymous discussions. Everyone is referred to as Anon subsequently. But this particular Anon asked if anyone out there had IT jobs in the early 2000s and were wondering if anyone knew about this, quote, sketchy HR-related program called Erratus, end quote. So we have another person popping up out of the blue asking about it. And they had seen a previous story of the girl in the tape gun and heard about it from friends, and they just wanted to know more information about it. 
One Anon responded and claimed that Erratus was a program that gave unconditional access to employee information, while others responded Ooh. that large corporations like UPS and Unilever and Ecolabs were all actively using Erratus. Yeah, so, I mean, there's an interesting tidbit of information there just talking about how it's like this program or whatever it is, right, is tied to HR. Yeah. It, it kind of feels like spyware in a way. Oh, man. Like, is it a way to, like, look in on your employees and make sure they're working? And if they find out about it, you're like, they found it. Yeah. And, and that's not something that's, like, new. You know what I mean? Or, or just sure. super far-fetched. But I, I wouldn't think that they would be like, okay, this is the program that we use, that HR uses or the company uses to spy on our employees. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and slap it on, like, a tape right. gun. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. Like, Why is it on a tape gun, the Correlation dude? between the two is still very awkward. <laughs> That's weird. I think it's worth pausing and mentioning, like, it, it seemed like this, this story spun out even further than just employment, right? People searching it at work or whatever. It seemed to become kind of like a folklore, like an urban legend, that if you started talking about Aratus online, that you yourself would also be disappeared. And Jillian, while making this outline and researching it, she was like very nervous, like, ah, uh, should I be making this? Like, should I be looking up this stuff? Right. And now I realize we're deep in the throes of the episode. And uh, I don't know. This kind of it makes me feel a little unsettled. That we've mentioned it a million times? Well, yeah. I mean, we're doing a whole episode on it. Oh, do so then who's going to fire us? What if we just call this episode Candy and Gumdrops? <laughs> candy and Gumdrops. Yeah, we'll, we'll slip it by the government, you know? Dude. I UPS just, isn't going to find us. Wow. It's like UPS is like the mobster gang. And it's just like, <laughs> I just wouldn't expect UPS to be this big old like uh, front for something other than packages. Wouldn't you, though, with their logistics chain... Oh, man, that's a mystery oh, for another man. day. Now you're, now you're selling it to me. Now I'm... Well, hold on. I don't want to get sued. UPS is a fine company. I've been told <laughs> to say this. All right, let's dive back into Aratus. So another early mention of Aratus was found actually on YouTube. A YouTube video in particular on January 23rd of 2015 in a music share thread. Again, this is still on 4chan. It's called MU. Someone shared an album by the band... KFC Murder Chicks. This was uploaded on November 21st of 2015. The YouTube channel that uploaded the album didn't actually belong to the band, but rather someone named Todd Ellsworth. In the video description, it reads, Erratus or Rusts? Not really sure exactly what that means, but it is a significant mention. Now, I guess this is some quick background on the origin of Erratus. Now, we're going to take a little sidebar uh, to a different topic that kind of dovetails in to where we uh to where we just were it's gonna feel a little non sequitur but we'll we'll get around to it so this is about a year later now from the uh the music share thread that we just discussed this is january 25th of 2016 we have another anonymous user back in that very same mu discussion board on 4chan the music board Mm -hmm. They started a discussion on a genre of music that they were pioneering. This genre was referred to as deep internet. I don't know if you've ever heard of this. No. This is, yeah, this is the first time I've heard of it too. It's a genre of music called deep internet. Yeah. You, before I tell you what it is, I'd be very curious to tap your gut instinct on this one. Uh, what do you think it could mean? To me, that just sounds like all the weird kind of like montage, like rabbit hole YouTube videos of music. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. People are just like smashing uh, together like The Simpsons with some kind of like uh, <laughs> rock version of Teletubby. You know what I mean? Like all that weird stuff. Like all those Call of Duty uh, highlight reels. Oh God. That, that have all of those like memes mashed over each other. That kind of thing. <laughs> I, I just think like more of the very like weird um, kind of like solo creator I made this in my free time internet mm. music. That's very, actually very, very close. Oh. Yeah, this genre was basically an interpretation of the noise genre that sampled from videos on YouTube that had 20 views or less. So it's very similar, it's very, but it's even deeper cut. 20 views or less. Right, so they're basically sampling noises from anonymous videos that have no traction. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. So this particular Anon that started this discussion shared examples of some of the samples that they had made. And the second video linked in that discussion is what caught the attention of a lot of other people. 
Now, this particular video was titled, quote, YouTube is monitoring and controlling my life. We have a link for that. I think, Christian, we can share it with Fredo if he wants to take a quick look at what we're about to dive into. But for everybody at home, we're going to share some screenshots of it on our Twitter page or on the Red Web YouTube channel. Uh, that way you can get an idea of what this video looks like. Okay, but, I'm um, bring it up. Yeah. Oh, God, the quality is like 144p. If that. This looks like it was not only filmed, but edited and re-exported on a Motorola Razor, is what I would guess. Hey, Jurassic Park. Yep. Oh, God, yep. that's like the third one, though. Yep. That one was not a good Jurassic Park movie. <laughs> Alan. Alan. You barely read the text. Oh, yeah. It's very difficult to read. I have the entire... Uh, list of the text, but basically this video was uploaded on January 23rd, 2016, and it was on the channel Chronos for Life Jurassic Park. This video featured some, as you mentioned, extremely low resolution images from the movie Jurassic Park, as well as text that was almost unreadable that was overlaid over these images. Again, this was when people say recorded on a potato, this is what they're referring to. This, this is, is the potato that went rotten. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is instead of reading the entire text, because it is quite long, I'm going to read a few lines of it and then basically just cut to a synopsis of what this text kind of is indicating. So I'm just going to read however long I feel on. Yeah, this yeah, one. go for it. Because yeah. there's, so, a, there's a whole bunch there. I'm curious. There's a whole bunch. Yeah. So, quote, I strongly believe that my mom was being monitored and harassed by YouTube, Universal Pictures and their affiliates. And then there's some text that's hard to make out secret of sorts she had uncovered within the original trilogy of jurassic park films so there's some missing text in there that it's okay, too it's impossible am, to decipher man i was very interested now i'm locked in <laughs> there's are you telling like i love the jurassic park films um so you're telling me there was a secret within them like, so that's what they're saying their mom what? has been monitored and harassed because they dived into some sort of secret what yeah so I'm I'll read some so more. I'm so interested to see like what type of secret or evidence or anything that mm -hmm. leads to some kind of, um, I don't know, hidden thing, feature, slide yeah. or something. So they, they say basically they're like, let me start off by saying uh, that I'm not crazy. You know, I haven't been diagnosed with this, that or the other. Right. They, they want to address that. They said, I'm just good at noticing patterns is what they said. I've always been a big fan of Jurassic Park. I saw the first film, something indecipherable and then said always shared with my mother etc etc basically what it says is and this is we're going to refer to this person as chronos to keep their name simple but what they're saying is chronos's mother created videos on youtube celebrating the jurassic park movies but after her death youtube began removing them from their platform and the videos chronos posted were supposedly re-uploads of his mother's videos chronos said that the takedowns were supposedly due to copyright claims but they felt that their mom was being targeted by youtube which I think the copyright thing is a very fair claim. Uh, it really, yeah, very much is. But, you know, that's the conspiracy part is that if they felt that they were locked in to some sort of conspiracy or some sort of secret that was hidden within the trilogy, then, of course, their attention is going to go to that. They're going to feel like they're being attacked yeah. and ostracized, right? But right now, it's very much just, you know, an unfortunate passing away of a parent mm -hmm. and, um, you know, the... YouTube copyright system caught up to that YouTube account. Right. Well, obviously, Kronos tried to re-upload some of these videos. They tried reaching out to YouTube, but ultimately they received no help. 4chan users weren't really sure what to make of this video, but the channel had previously uploaded two videos prior to that one. The fact that there were other videos on the channel made people think, at least on 4chan, that, okay, this is a legitimate channel. This is a real person. And so their claims are at least meritable in that sense that this isn't some sort of bot upload because you know we've right. talked it's, about it's easier to believe mm -hmm. that the channels like has some sort of like legitimacy if it's been uploaded for a while right you're less likely to right. have someone that's like a bot or that's just fake um trying to do the long con long game exactly and i mean we've also talked lightly about some mysteries um whether it was that doctor video or some other videos that Oh, yeah, get uploaded yeah. automatically, right? That feel very yep. much like a bot or an algo is doing it for you. 
but this one kind of made it feel, okay, now there's a human behind this. So because of that, they created a separate discussion focusing on Kronos in particular. And again, don't worry, these two different topics are going to dovetail in nicely. So Kronos noticed a spike in views on their channel and they responded by uploading another video the very same day, three hours after that discussion thread had started, the one on the music and the, and the YouTube video and all that. This one was entitled, quote, here goes nothing, dot, dot, dot. This video had the same low quality as the other and the description read, interestingly enough, quote, this video is mainly to test to see if it gets deleted. First time really trying to see the limits of the censored algorithm. If it flags this one, that's some spooky sh Now where I said censored, it's worth mentioning that the word is only half censored. They actually indicate the word erotis. So to read the sentence as its intended meaning, first time really trying to see the limits of the erotis algorithm. So now suddenly we have this interesting person talking about erotis. And the text in the video actually asked for help and it says, quote, anyone with experience in the erotis or erotis system, if you could send me a message, I would be extremely grateful. Hmm. I'm gonna let that one simmer with you for a second. So there's a... Yeah, I mean, this person is like very convinced that there's a whole setup. I, my whole thing is that where, where did they get the whole like, like terminology of erotis or the thought of erotis? I'm assuming through, through his mom. That's a very good question because it seems kind of arbitrary out of the blue that they're suddenly referring to something that was talked yeah, about a year ago. Like, how the heck do they know? But we will have an answer for you uh, shortly. How about that? Uh... Weird we'll answer. talk about it in a little bit. <laughs> I'm just, I'm just baiting you a little in, bit. I'm, interesting. I'm ent enticing you to go further. So, basically, though, what seems to be standing out to me is that there is this algorithm that people are starting to know about, and it started as an HR-centric thing to monitor, but now it seems like people are treating it as a global monitoring algorithm that it is looking for people that know the secret, whatever the secret is and it is subsequently pulling those things off of the internet or pulling those people off of the internet. Whoa, that's way, uh, that's a lot bigger. Mm-hmm. And so now the question becomes, is Kronos thinking that his mom, whether, uh, you know, I don't know how the nature of her death, whether it was natural causes or if something else happened. And so the question then obviously becomes, is Erotus involved with that? True. Right, because she seemed like she was onto something that YouTube was pulling videos off and then he's re-uploading them, seeing like, quote, let's see if this uh, algorithm right. pulls it back off. It pings again. Mm-hmm. But uh, clearly something was going on and it seemed that Kronos could have been a victim of the Erotus program mentioned earlier on that Paranormal X board on 4chan. So in investigating Kronos's video further, or his several videos further, the auto-generated captions were found to contain an address so when you turn on the captions, you see those at the bottom. I'll read a few of those lines. Okay. Uh, there, there's four lines. The first one, are far from over 200 Corbin, Kentucky, 40219. So obviously a place in Kentucky. We have a, a potential town with a zip code and a, maybe a street number or like the street address number, but no street itself. Later on, it says, as well as, quote, overthrow the government. Another line says, and seemingly random numbers, 111111. And then we have... 10.3%, 10.4%. These captions, again, are automatically generated by YouTube. These are not the, the manual captions, supposedly. Mm, okay. Mm -hmm. And then in an older video titled Jurassic Park 3 Tribute Reupload. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we, we got a real big fan on our hands of the third one. That's awesome. Morse code could be heard faintly and was deciphered to say Hollywood Astral Projection Clinic. So now we're going... What? Real weird. But I but I feel like if that was something that was a thing, then everyone would be talking about it. Or maybe they do until they don't because the government pulls them off the internet. Damn. Yeah. No more Damn. gaming in Halo for you. But and then I feel oh. Well. Okay. <laughs> no, you're okay <laughs> with that one. Uh Rainbow Six. Rainbow Six gone. All right, question. Apex gone. Questionable. Uh Pokemon Pack's gone. Okay. Gone too far, government. <laughs> government, you've gone too far. You've gone too far. But when it comes to these videos, a lot of users left comments asking questions about Erotus on Kronos' videos, which eventually Kronos actually responded in their final known video upload on January 27th, 2016. We have a link for that one as well. 
So we'll let you take a quick look at that one. This one says Lost World Jurassic Park up front, but it's still incredibly distorted oh, and very God. hard to read. Why is the logo blue? Oh, it changes. And it's red oh, and, and it's purple. Green now and yellow. Oh, okay. Oh, and then you got the moon on the horizon. Is there a moon that pops up? Yeah, you'll see it here in a second. Oh, it is the moon. Yeah, so let's read a couple of the lines from this video. Again, not all of them. If you if you want to check out the videos yourself, uh, Christian, why don't we go ahead and post some of these links on Twitter so people have access to them. And and I, I mean, I just want to give a warning. I don't think there's anything particularly nefarious here, but I do want to say, just like with every right. link you find on the internet, click with yep. caution. You know, we'll provide you these resources that do go straight to YouTube. However, you know, if you believe that there is something nefarious going on here, don't proceed. Uh, I just want to give you that blanket warning. But this last video in particular, I do want to talk about uh, some of the lines. So it says, quote, I don't know much about programming or computer systems, so I'm not too savvy about how to trick them. All I really know about Aratus is that it's used by dozens of companies. Some other lines say recent as in within the last five or six years. So that gives us a timetable as far as the window of operation here. And it says further that they seem to use it as a copyright enforcement tool, which works as an excellent indecipherable. If you want to take down other things as well, but it has limitations and I'm fairly sure that my test video helped ferret those out, maybe. So basically they're talking about Aratus as this smart algorithm. Right, for targeting and taking down stuff on the internet, not mm -hmm. just copyright stuff, but like beyond it. It seems like a first attempt at like an AI that's scrubbing for, uh, it can have a targeted thing, whether it's, all right, send it out to monitor employees, send it out to monitor copyright infringement. And I guess that makes sense given that window of the internet was riddled with copyright and and homages and all those kind of things. Yeah, I mean, I, I honestly, like, I don't think it's, I don't think it's something that isn't an actual thing that we mm -hmm. have in some, you know, with some degree, I'm sure there's, I mean, we have the whole algorithm system. Who's to say we're not trying to throw an AI back there behind right. it as well to help facilitate the program. Right. Yeah. I mean, yes, it, it's, it's very invasive. Um, but I mean, I, again, we live in a world where we have Facebook accounts and stuff like that. So I don't, I don't right. know. As of right now, it's like, it feels like a, um, like a very weak plot to like a James Bond film where it's just like, oh my God, we have this technology and that like it can scrub the world. And yeah. it's like, oh my God, will it destroy people and kill them? No, it just takes down copyright stuff or information off the internet. Right. But I guess, you know, we look back and we go, yeah, this all makes sense. Now, I think what's happened is the Overton windows shifted. What is what is acceptable and what is defined as acceptable has shifted. And I guess the fears behind Erratus are a slippery slope. Like, is it something simply out there to target copyright or is that where it starts? And does it slip right. further and further to become more and more invasive? Yeah, I think it's very interesting. Companies got a... Uh got the premium version they can start scrubbing get rid of a lot of a lot more things right and it could also be used as counterintelligence espionage all those sorts of things which could be constructive but they could just as easily be destructive yeah and and this makes me wonder maybe this is why these videos are so low resolution they're resolute enough for oh, someone to like you and i Mm-hmm. Like we can see what's going on, but you you pointed out that the logo is shifting colors. Maybe it's to it's to test. Maybe this Erratus algorithm isn't smart enough to really capture that this is the proper logo, rather than something that's just shifting and colory and all of that sort of thing. And so, I mean, he even talks about testing this algorithm to see if it gets deleted. Damn, that's a good point, actually. Yeah. Let me think about that. It, yeah, like the the low resolution being purposeful. Yeah. I mean, it's just like those Google authenticators, right? When you type your password, it says, we want to make sure you're human. And it mm -hmm. says, click on everything that's a bridge or a stoplight. And uh, you're just teaching an algorithm to know what that is. Right. And in these early days of, of algorithms, they're just like, ah, I barely recognize <laughs> words. <laughs> like, I don't know. <laughs> but let's recap kind of what Kronos is saying in this right. last video. He's describing Aratus as a copyright enforcement program used by many companies. He actually names Unilever again, but he also mentions 3M. And he says that they're early adopters, but thought that they could have been using this algorithm 
in different ways, right? It's not just copyright, there's other opportunities. Kronos believed that Aratus was still after them, just still after Kronos, after all these years, as in it's been chasing him down for a while, though they did not say why that was the case. I, I feel like if you have some sort of technology like that and you were being chased, it, it would have been able to get you, you know what I mean? Yeah, I think so too. And, and I don't think you would use your fledgling program to chase down someone who is actively trying to dodge it, you know? Yeah. Because then you're just going up against your arch nemesis, right? And they're like, right. I know your weakness, e it's exactly. low res. Yeah, so that, that's where I feel like that's a very weak point in kind of like the whole mystery. Mm -hmm. But I'm interested to see where it goes. I think the thing is, too, though, is like a lot of people that are listening now, uh, especially younger Gen Z, you know, a lot of the social media, a lot of the algorithm AI centric things are, are kind of just part of life now. And it's hard to imagine a world without it. But I don't want to age myself too much, but it really isn't <laughs> all that long ago, maybe 10, 15 years ago that that these things weren't so necessarily at the forefront of, you know, our language, our understanding. They might have been there kind of emerging, but they weren't nearly as sophisticated as they are now. Right. And so, you know, it's interesting to talk about this only a few years later and be like, okay, people were afraid of its emergence, but now it's so pervasive that it's exactly. gone invisible again. And we kind of just go, eh, it makes sense to exist, <laughs> you know? Yeah, I mean... I, I think like the convenience of technology for a lot of people um, kind of like weighs and sways them and and, mm -hmm. and and allows them to go, you know what? It is what it is because, you know, I don't want to lose my tech. And if it's the price I have to pay, then you know, right. so be it. I got nothing to hide type thing. Hello, Task Force. It's Trevor. As always, this is my time. I get to sit down without Fredo, Christian or Jillian kind of hanging out with us. It's just you and me talking about some housekeeping stuff, some task force business, you know what I mean? This is kind of like a meeting of the minds, you and me, sitting down, hashing it out. I just want to say thank you all so much for supporting us this holiday season and getting the merch that we have at store.roosterteeth.com. It really does mean a whole lot. We, we have this really cool jacket, or hat, I should say, this really, really cool jacket that you guys sold out in under two hours, and it blew me away, as always. The all-red variant of the badge uh, slash pin was also sold out super quick. But don't delay, there are still some items left in stock if you are so inclined. We have a Field Notes notebook out there. It's a little smaller, but it's like a matte black with a shiny red embossed logo of the Task Force. We also have some shirts and some mugs and things like that, if that's your speed. But also, and most importantly, we have the Mothman propaganda merch, the Misunderstood Hero. It is available now. You can get it. Uh, we have two posters. I believe the blue one is the limited variant. So we have the blue and the red, and then the red is also printed on a shirt. It's very comfortable. I wear it one size up from my normal size, if, if you know, just to get that loose fit look. But uh, but yeah, it's, uh, it's really cool. That was from our own designer, Tobin. He's stellar with everything he does. And so I was really happy to have him jump on this. He actually, uh, again, I know I've been teasing these for a while. He also designed the cryptid pin set that will be coming in the next couple months, uh, probably sometime in January. I've got my fingers crossed, but either way that is available now. And if you want to get that, you have a couple days left. I think, uh, the 15th is the cutoff date. If you want to get stuff in time for Christmas in particular, uh, regardless of how you might want to celebrate the holidays, I uh, just want to make sure that you, uh, keep the shipping delays in mind. You know, if you want to give these as a gift or get them for yourself, or any, you know, your pets. I don't know, maybe your pet wants to represent some Mothman stuff. I don't know, I'm not going to judge your pet. But anyway, uh, yeah, that's what's going on with Task Force Land, and thank you all again so much. I, I really couldn't be happier about just the community we've built around this show and the show itself. It's just a little passion project that's turned into this big old Task Force, and, uh, you know, I think I speak for the team when I say thank you all so, so much for supporting us and, and just making this show feel just a pleasure to be a part of. You know what I mean? Like, it's just talking about mysteries and having a good time and hearing from you all, reading the reviews, all those five stars have been excellent and, and just awesome. Hearing people share the podcast and tweet about the podcast, everybody doing the Spotify wrapped, uh, sharing the fact that they've been listening to us as their number one podcast. All of this is so humbling and, uh, and I can't thank you enough. So again, tis the season. So I just wanted to stop for a second and talk to you all and, and thank you. Uh, thank you for listening. Anyway, with that said, I have a sponsor that I want to talk about. This episode of Red Web is sponsored by The Jordan Harbinger Show. You know, the average podcast listener has around six shows in their rotation, a healthy volume. So, you know, listen, I get it. 
Red Web maybe isn't the only podcast you listen to, and that's totally fine. However, I have a suggestion, maybe that you can add to your lineup. It's informative, it's entertaining, and it's packed with interesting information all over the place. Give a listen to The Jordan Harbinger Show. Jordan dives into the minds of fascinating people from athletes and authors and scientists to mobsters, spies, and hostage negotiators. So really, everybody under the sun is a candidate for this show. In fact, he even has an episode starter pack, which is dedicated to cults, scams, and conspiracies. So I think if you like this show, you're going to really like that one. And a couple episodes that we actually really enjoyed, he talked about uh, experts on how to debunk conspiracy theorists and uh, another one on how to recognize pseudoscience, which honestly I think is very important because there is a lot of faff happening in the world, a lot of invention, a lot of science, and sometimes you gotta, you gotta cut through the noise and figure out what's pseudoscience and what is real, proper, lean onable science. We really enjoy this show, and we think you will as well. There's just so much within this show to listen to. So check out The Jordan Harbinger Show by going to jordanharbinger.com slash start for some episode recommendations. Or you can simply search The Jordan Harbinger Show. That's H-A-R-B as in boy, I-N as in Nancy, G-E-R. And you can search that on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever else you listen to podcasts. And with that, let's dive right back into the mystery. So now that we've talked about Kronos and we've talked about Erratus and its origins, let's talk about how the investigation online kind of followed. Because obviously we've laid the groundwork of something very interesting and potentially mysterious, right? If you want to lean into the the idea that this algorithm is nefarious and that it's disappearing people off the internet and it mm-hmm. and we don't know its motivations, this caused a lot of intrigue. And so a lot of people online began investigating. They started finding... Uh, things online. So the same address that was in the auto-generated captions, right? That 200 Kentucky, yada, 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 like those mm-hmm. those auto-generated captions. They were found on the KFC Murder Chicks Tumblr page that we, you know, that band we referred to. And it was also on the band's Bandcamp website, which was in fact their actual band address. Now, once this was found, what's interesting is that the captions disappeared very soon thereafter. And then when people started investigating even further, looking at the Morse code, we couldn't really find an explanation. Though, it's worth noting that there was an album with the same name, that Hollywood Astral Projection Clinic. It was just a name of an album, but it could be complete coincidence because this album came out in 2020 and Astral Projection Clinics are actually a real thing. It's not, we're not really certain if this Morse code ended up referencing anything or if this was a uh, an album that referenced the Morse code, but it is worth mentioning, right? It, maybe it's a right. red herring. But at the same time, people were studying the original YouTube channel belonging to Todd Ellsworth. Now, diving into that channel, other videos included on there, there was an album by an artist called DJ Roswell. Todd's Twitter page was actually found as well, and their handle was at Erotus or Bust. So now we have another reference of Erotus. Okay. Yeah, Ross popping up in a handle. Mm -hmm. And their first tweet on that particular profile was a very creepy image of a computer-generated police sketch. And it was a sketch of an actual criminal. I don't want to dive into that crime because it's pretty heavy-handed. But uh, ultimately, it's worth knowing that this image is the main image associated with the Erotus mystery. And so now you know if you do see an image associated with Erotus that it's most likely this computer-generated police sketch based on a pretty um, nefarious crime over in Maui. Now, the second tweet that they had on that profile actually mentioned USPS, the United States Postal Service. Oh, here we go. Mm Mm-hmm. And I'll quote that tweet. It says, The deepest part of the deep web was under our noses the whole time. The Postal Service. So deep, they're not even on the internet at all. (laughs) Which is very strange. They're like, yes, the USPS is at the center of this supposed deep web. They're so deep. They're in real life. I was about to say, I used their <laughs> their website not too long ago. Uh-oh. Yeah, I got mm. God. Yeah, I got God, you know. On the, uh, now I, I apologize if I'm bouncing all over the place. Fredo, feel free to stop me, ask any questions yeah, no, that you no might have. I'll straighten things out. But jumping back to that Tumblr page we talked about, you know, the KFC Murder Chicks page. Mm-hmm. They actually mentioned that they felt reluctant to send their merch through the U.S. Postal Service, which now starts to provide yet more connective tissue between some of these referential entities in these videos, these YouTube channels, this band, all this stuff. Now, Todd Ellsworth was found to be an anagram 
Okay, this is starts to get weird, even weirder. It's an anagram for The Lost World, which, as you know, was the <laughs> sequel yeah, to yep. Jurassic Park. <laughs> And after Anon realized this, uh, the single D in Todd, you know, they were like, "There's, it's weird that Todd is spelled with one D, T-O-D. And I guess I should have mentioned that at the top of the episode because it did honestly stand out to me. I just didn't want to call somebody out for their strange or, or unique name. It's I've never really seen Todd with one D. But if it is an anagram for Lost World, that would make a whole lot of sense because there is only one D in the Lost World. And again, this points back to the Kronos channel that had the Lost right. World Jurassic Park tribute, blah, blah, blah. Now, clearly there was some sort of connection between these entities, but it was unknown, ultimately, how Erratus was involved. All these entities are talking about Erratus, all these entities have fear over their control over things, and they share those fears, right? Whether it's a uh, an aversion to the U.S. Postal Service, or what have you, or, or Jurassic Park Lost or World. Just I don't, Jurassic I don't know. Park, I just... <laughs> I'm Maybe su- dinosaurs are out there. I'm just surprised, like, if there was this Morse code in the movie, right? Like, oh, like the public can access this. This isn't like, oh, no, there's no footage of the Lost World. Well, right. Nothing. It's like I could just rent it right now. Yeah. But do you have the deleted scenes, the lost tapes? Oh, no, no. <laughs> that's a whole different story. Now, obviously, people were trying to get into into this, right? They're really trying to dig in, get some answers. So they go over to the band's Tumblr page. There's a Q&A section, as most Tumblr pages have that open ask feature. And uh, a lot of people are just trying to get answers that way. So they were asked about their favorite movies, and the band said that they liked the Carnosaur movies. I don't know what Carnosaur like is, but... Carnosaur movies? Is that- yeah, I guess we have it in the notes here. Christian, maybe you can expound upon it. But it says that the Carnosaur films competed with the Jurassic Park movies. What? Is it like a like a knockoff Jurassic Park series? I would imagine unsuccessfully because I honestly haven't heard of these. Yeah, in 1993, Carnosaur came out and then there were two sequels. They were trilogy Whoa, of... Oh, I'm looking on Google hell. Images Dinosaur now. Dinosaur B movies. Oh, this is awesome. How do those movies make money? Because people just think that it's Jurassic Park. I don't know. People like me want to just have a drink and watch it. Look at this. Oh, my God. Carnosaur. Carnosaur. When you thought it was all over. Oh, man, this is awesome. Okay, well, now I'm going to put that on my short list for movies to watch. But okay, this looks bad. So basically, people dove into the Q&A and says, hey, band, what's your favorite movie? Hoping, right, that they would say Jurassic Park or Lost World or whatever. And they gave the knockoff version. Uh, I mean, you're still in the same realm. Some people are like, oh, my God, it's a hint. Oh, yeah, it's still in the same family. But when people asked about the USPS, they said this, quote, This is probably a controversial view, but there's a lot to suggest they're tied in with a lot of the government's more unsavory activities. Spying, profiling, general disregard for constitutional rights, all of that fun stuff. Lots of stuff sent to us, an inordinate amount really, has never made it and vice versa. Not to say I'm in favor of the way they got f***ed over by the FedEx and UPS lobbies either though. But okay, so basically what they're saying with that is they are attributing a lot of Stuff that we've talked about with Erratus, now they're really directly attributing that to the USPS, right? Espionage, mm-hmm. spying, algorithmic data gathering, yeah, that sort of stuff. Yeah, a lot of, of the, like, the usual conspiracies, like government conspiracies and stuff, they're just like, it's just tied in with them. Mm-hmm. And then people started saying, okay, well, let's just, let's just hit the nail on the head and ask, what do you know about Erratus? Damn. Their answer was simple. Uh, like magic slash Yu-Gi-Oh errata? Question mark. <laughs> So I think, yeah, I think you were onto something with your gut check. I think what they're referring to is erotica, which is a whole different bag of worms. Yeah. But they're playing dumb, it yeah. seems. They're trying to beat around the bush with it. I mean, if if it's as bad as people are thinking it is, and then it's, you know, you don't want to be talking about it openly. That's true. Man, I love your gut check. So here's the thing. People kept asking about Erratus because they're like, look, okay, you answered this one. You're not afraid to steer away from it. You were dancing around the bush a little bit with the other answers, but let's talk about Erratus some more. And people kept asking. And eventually they said, listen, I don't know anything. Please stop asking us to answer anything about it, right? Just stop asking us about it. And it seemed like they wanted to keep at arm's length with this topic. 
Yeah, they humored it for a second and then just distanced mm -hmm. themselves. Like they acknowledge that. One hundred percent. I don't know. Sure, this might be something, but I'm, I'm not in liberty to talk. Right. It seems like the, okay. I'm gonna play dumb here. I'm gonna placate everybody. But it seems like they want to say, you know, seven degrees from Kevin Bacon. But in this term, it's it's seven degrees from Aratus. They they want to <laughs> yeah. talk about it, but not directly. They don't want to get God if it's something that's real. Hundo P. So everyone stop talking about it, they said. But then the band was asked about one Todd Ellsworth. They asked about Todd Ellsworth, not because his relationship to this mystery, but because someone heard this name was mentioned in one of their songs. In fact, their song called Get Sh Straight. And they actually then responded and they said, he's fine. Don't worry about it. Oh. So, so this is where all of these loose connections really come together on this band's Q&A page because they're talking about Aratus. Man, they're just talking so like loosely about this. Right. Like, they're really teetering on the edge here. Mm-hmm. And so Aratus is in the, well, I guess by way of Todd Ellsworth is referenced in their songs. They're talking about UPS or USPS. Like, okay, it, it's all like the web is coming together uh, a little bit. It's still a bit weird. But I, th I feel like I'm getting a mental map of this a little better now. Yeah. And I, I don't know. I mean, like, if this is some sort of, like, weird test or something, there's a lot of, like, tentacles to this source. You know what I mean? To, to this project. It's, mm -hmm. and it's weird. And I don't know. Like, it's, it start, it's, like, it's starting to branch off in so many different ways. Where I'm just, like, it's, I don't know if this is some sort of, like... It's getting hard to believe this is like, oh, it's just as a test to see like how people right. react. But it also seems so mundane, right? I mean, like, despite the claims of espionage and all that sort of stuff, it, it it's weird. I don't know. It, it feels like there's a lot to be feared because of this unknown algorithm, but it also just seems to be a thing. Like, it's almost, again, an urban legend that someone popped up and created. It seems yeah. to be centered around such a tight unit of people. Mm -hmm. But... And that's kind of the investigation, but as the investigation continued to unfold, in fact, during the height of the investigation on Aratus, a lot of the people that were using that term, Aratus, in their posts and comments and everything started to have their accounts banned on 4chan. Now, it's hard to know if this was maybe due to copyright infringement, um, even though they weren't sharing anything copyrighted. Or if it was that the mods and admins behind the website of 4chan were maybe having some fun to say, like, well, this will fluff up the mystery a little bit. Oh, I didn't even think about that, because I was about to say, like, 4chan just seems like they're their own fort on the internet, and so to have bans striking, like, that, it, that would be some heavy pressure on 4chan, I feel like. But, yeah, I mean, maybe they do want to, like, rile up uh, this conspiracy to get people to to head on over and, and that's a good point too. bring traffic, traffic to the site yeah yeah so on one hand people are like okay well is this copyright infringement despite me not saying anything copyrighted is erotis copywritten or is erotis some sort of copyright enforcement bot and you know i i posited my own theory that maybe the admins and mods are just having some fun because of website traffic but if there is a force out there pressuring this website to ban its own users it, it just kind of continues to solidify this entity that is Aratus and build up the potential fear behind whatever it is. It just kind of ignites the mystery even yeah. further, regardless. No, most definitely. It gives it legs. Yeah. And people started referring to getting banned, jokingly referring to it, as getting eroded. So it's Aratus <laughs> without the S. Of course, it's the internet. So. <laughs> so, you know, if someone disappears, you're like, ah, you know, you got Bob eroded. got eroded or whatever. So people were scared that it would happen elsewhere, not just on 4chan, or that they could get fired from their jobs at, for mentioning Aratus, right? Because that's where a lot of this really began. But then if, why wouldn't they just get fired? I don't know. I mean, I feel like if this is something like super serious, like in the way that they're making it appear to be, then you'd have like a whole situation where they're just they're just going down and wiping like right. your life away. And then oh man, well maybe that's true. Maybe they were just trying to be light-handed about it, or maybe they were yeah. trying to be like, yeah. well, they're not talking about it on a work PC or work hours, so, you know, let's not become too obvious, you know, the elephant in the room. Right. But I don't know, man, that's, that's weird. But ultimately, no one knew what this program was, and I think that that's been clear since the beginning. But you yep. got to remember, like, in the height of this, 
this this erratus suddenly comes up. It's talked about for a few months, disappears, comes back again a year later in a different form. And people have these really interesting stories behind it. And so you're like, all right, well, let's look into this. And then suddenly the people looking into it start disappearing or getting banned. It It's just a very strange circumstance. And and that's, yeah. again, why we're talking about it. But yeah, and I, I think one of the things I was saying, you know, it's because it, it's it's 4chan, right? Yeah, Cause they're, they're very much like, hey, we're just going to be the Internet and we're just going to do what we want to do. But I don't know if you're if you're going to like kind of like a. Uh, shove away the whole theory that they're trying to bring traffic to the site at that point you just kind of go well who has the power to really like stiff arm 4chan right that's true i mean outside of like the government right which yeah, kind of exactly. lends credence to that part of the the mystery but you know ultimately people didn't know if this was a program or what this program was but from what they could tell it seemed that if this was a program that it was an all-knowing program that it had many different purposes but that it was very sophisticated beyond which that you know most programs would be right mm -hmm. or beyond their comprehension even so some claimed that when searching this term and trying to investigate it that even searching for it would cause them to become quote eroded so instead they would spell it with a single r e r a t a s in order to avoid detection now if this is such a sophisticated bot i don't think that that's gonna help you yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Like, if it's sophisticated, it probably would try and read context at that point. Right. Like, but I mean, then again, there's, you know, we have systems that like, I mean, even just when you're gaming and stuff, you just kind of go, oh, that's not like, that's a bad word. And they, you know, spelt mm -hmm. it differently with or with characters. Um, right. So that's how they got around the system. Yeah. I mean, not too long ago, it was easy to kind of fudge those sensors, but now obviously not that way so maybe this was just in that sweet spot where yeah they felt safe but when continuing to investigate right there was a main youtuber kind of one of the main youtubers behind this mystery early on was one named exer herb e-x-e-r-e-r-b now when it comes to this youtuber it seems that they had also been eroded right because they suddenly kind of just stopped talking about this mystery stopped investigating and so a lot of people began thinking well they got disappeared or they got banned or something happened but Exer Herb didn't only make videos on this mystery they were actually pretty active in the uh the 4chan x board where this mystery first appeared hmm. they started their videos kind of after this came about for the second time in March of 2016. And by May, their videos, their channel, their Twitter, and every online trace of them had gone entirely. So it stands to reason that they had been, quote, eroded, unless they wanted to play around and said, I'm bored with this. Let me wipe my footprint and, and feed the mystery. But yeah, but usually like if you're a YouTuber and you're putting in the time and effort, it you're, you're you're trying to earn the clout and like the subscribers and the view counts to make it like something successful mm -hmm. and a job you don't really go into youtube going i'm gonna just do this and then i'm gonna disappear i mean perhaps i will say that you and i have spent many a year with youtube as a platform with which we create content it is our job etc but i mean for this person, it could have been a playground, you know? Uh, I mean, yeah, but then why? I or mean, a way to just investigate. I don't know if they're like showing, you know, face reveals and stuff like that or face mm. cams or anything like that on their content. It doesn't seem like they need to. So at oh, that I point, wouldn't. <laughs> yeah. So at, so at that point, right? Yeah. It's safe to say that they probably didn't. So at that point, why wouldn't they just do it and then just go, okay, and then just walk right. away from it? Yeah. Like, leave it. Yeah. Hmm. That's a good point. Well, that I, makes I me know. think. I just feel like it very. It takes a very, very like particular type of person. To be like I'm gonna create content and, and then, then I'm wipe going to it, delete everything. Ugh. Yeah, I mean, unless you had some sort of regrets or pressure from something. Yeah. Yeah, I would be like, no, I worked really hard on that. Even if I don't want to do this anymore, I'll leave it up. But uh, anyway, all of their stuff disappeared. Their entire internet footprint. Now, some were wondering after this happened if Xer Herb looked too deep into Aratus, or if the algorithm finally caught up to them, or what have you. But there was another YouTuber called Toxicologist who uploaded a video covering Exer Herb's disappearance. Though due to their similar styles, you know, internet mysteries with text-to-speech narration, you know, to keep that privacy, some believe that they could just be the same person. 
it's hard to know. But why wouldn't they say they're the same person? You know what I mean? Like, if they're trying to crack the mystery, and I was just about to bring this up too, like, why not just come back under a new name and be like, hey, it's me. I got stopped, and, and they're going to try and stop me again. Well, because if you take the side that this is nothing, like a nothing burger, and they, after investigating this really deeply, they found that it was a nothing burger, and they said, screw it, let me disappear. I can at least make something out of this. I'll cover my own disappearance, and I'll get a bunch of attention that way. You can kind of like mm. become part of a mystery. You can kind of get some clout that way. True. But then, you know, then you'd pop up again. I don't, as far that's as true. I know right now, there's no resurgence. Yeah, that's true. I don't know. Some people think that they could have been the same person regardless because of the way that they handled the videos, very similar styles, anonymous and everything. But with the subsequent videos covering Erotus by large channels like Nexpo, we've talked about him before, Atrocity Guide, and Blame It on George, uh, it was clear that Erotus was not the cause of Exer Herb's disappearance, if the program once again existed at all. And so, yeah, that kind of cuts to the chase, right? People have, as you asked, talked about this many a time and are still there. Their content is still available. You can see it today. So did the rules shift or was this never an issue in the first place? Yeah, I mean, I, I just feel like it never was an issue in the first place, but that's just the skeptic in me, you know? Yeah, I mean, that's I, a fair, that's a fair I, assumption. I feel like maybe people were just like, you know what? This, this seems like a fun mystery and all I gotta do is mention it and then delete my account to be a part of it. Sure, here we go. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like it's, it's actually one of the easiest like mysteries to get involved Hold up. in if you think about it. Wait a minute. We're going to post this episode. 24 hours later, we're going to wipe every trace of Red Web off the internet. Oh, sh I mean. And then we're going to come back as wet bread. <laughs> I mean, look, that's that's how you keep building on it. You know what I mean? Um, we wouldn't do that. But, no. But some people that out there, brave, you know, brave enough or don't have as much on the line. And they're mm, just like, eh, yeah, whatever, you know? Yeah. I... I I mean, like I said, I, this is probably like the easiest low effort mystery to get involved in. Oh, yeah, for sure. But ultimately, the legend of Erotus led to sort of an, an urban legend in that searching this term could lead to something monitoring your online activity, installing Trojans and malware onto your computers and even losing your job as a result. So, again, it kind of spiraled out from all of this mystery, 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 mystery. <laughs> Theory. We're going to leave it in. <laughs> it kind of spiraled out from all of these kind of mysterious stories um, and became larger than perhaps it is. And so the question remains, is this something? Does it exist out there? And did the rules shift in order, like with a shifting populace, as the rules changed, they changed? I feel like if it did, it was just a result of uh, like this was something smaller and then people, you know, blew it up to be something bigger. Yeah. Well, of course, you know, as we hinted at the top of the episode, the theories are pretty simple. It's it's a question of whether you want to believe or not. Is this real? A hoax? Is it a is it an urban legend? Is it a story? Or is it a factual algorithm that's out there hunting for God knows what? But ultimately, following the investigations that we've talked about, Erotus was accepted at large to be an ARG. Although the concept of an algorithm for an all-knowing algorithm still is unnerving, right? whatever lies behind that's that's very much that terminator mentality yeah to have an ai that is either self-aware or very knowledgeable is, is spooky right yep it kind of reminds me and info hazard like which you've maybe never heard of before but an info hazard is literally a hazard warning for knowing something and that's exactly what i'm going to talk about here in a second it's a thought experiment called roko's basilisk now fredo you're strapped in yeah. I'm giving you the info hazard. Do you want me to proceed while users at large can skip this if they'd like? What? What are we? What, well, what am I getting into? Basically, you won't know until I've really talked about it. <laughs> but I want to. But here's the thing about an info hazard is the hazard is knowing the information with which I am about to divulge to you a thought experiment called Roko's Basilisk. And that knowing about this implicates you into the theoretical danger, as it were. Uh, sure. I mean, I feel okay. like you know about it, and you I seem know about to be it. okay. I'm okay. But here's the thing. All right, so Roko's Basilisk, and I'm going to do my best because I'm going off the cuff. This is all for my memory. But basically, this idea of an all-knowing algorithm is what 
spurs my mind onto Roko's Basilisk. Now, what that is, is that supposedly, let's just extrapolate a theoretical future where we create an AI and this AI can compute all potential pasts and futures. By Ooh. doing that, okay. it can calculate your thoughts. That is, if it can know all past, presents, and futures, it can know everything that's going on and it can know, right. it can calculate everything you've ever thought. And it would then want to maybe control everything, et cetera, et cetera. And the, the thought experiment goes, if you knew that this thing would exist and you purposely or acted in a way that would subvert its arrival or delay its arrival, this AI, it could theoretically punish you, right? It could it could backwards right, calculate. It yeah. Mm -hmm. It could trace back to like all the way to your origin and your origin's mm -hmm. origin, et cetera. Et cetera, yeah. And so basically you are inclined to help an AI of that caliber come to fruition on the risk of if you didn't help it and it did come to fruition, that it could put you in a mind prison, that it could like whatever, like the, the punishments are extreme and delete you. Right. Or it could put you in an, like in the matrix, right. And in, in a computer system and just punish you for all eternity. That's basically what Rocco's Basilisk kind of is. And so that's what kind of is interesting about this all knowing algorithm kind of theory, right? Because you can have an algo that runs out and tries to maintain law and order and rules and search for things. Mm -hmm. Or you can have an AI that runs rampant like Skynet and decides I'm taking over. If you didn't help me take over, Bye bye. Right. Get punished. Yeah. I feel like I feel like what they would do first is to see, you know, which way the human is swayed, right? Because was what's the need to go to such extreme measures if the human is willing to help out, or mm -hmm. if the human just doesn't care or doesn't believe it. Mm hmm. Also, kind of reminds me of Westworld, right? Season three had that big old sphere orb. Oh yeah. And how it, that basically was. Uh, a use of that in pop culture in a way. But mm -hmm. coming back to this idea of ARG and all of that, a lot of people started to wonder and worry if such a sophisticated copyright algorithm could possibly exist and if it could know of itself in order to delete instances of itself or monitor online activity without them knowing, it would mean that this, this algorithm is actually quite intelligent because that is one of the things that defines humans and the human experience is the, the ability to perceive that others can perceive the the ability to be self-aware is one thing that sets our minds apart and so it kind of sets people up for a pretty genuine fear if an ai has that kind of capability yeah i mean I'm, we i mean we probably got some a very intelligent um ai but I, I don't know like if it was just deleting a bunch of stuff mm -hmm. i just don't think like Right, like it don't. It Simple steps, have the baby. It doesn't have the capability of going outside of technology, right? So yet, I mean, yeah. I walk, <laughs> you know, but we, I mean, like, I walk out my house and walk. I tell my neighbor, like, there's no way for it to divert that information. Hmm. You know. Oh, I mean, I'm just thinking of all the possible ways, right? It takes over a Tesla, drives into you, it just like finds finds a drone to take over. Like, I mean, sure, yeah, ugh. but I feel like we'd. I don't know. I feel like there'd be a, a constant. No, like, I'm. I agree. I feel like swatting of like people and information. Would it be able to like track your phone and listen in in that way, or maybe do do you I mean, jump I'm in a sure, Faraday cage and say? I'm sure, they have the technology to listen in on our phones and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. But also at the same time, it's like I'm in mean, cool. I'm, they got nothing to hide. I'm just kind of doing right. my thing. Anyway, I, I could spiral off about yeah, that sort can... of fear, but <laughs> but anyway, kind of coming back to bases though. I mean. You know, people talked about this being an ARG. A lot of people still talked about this being a sophisticated algo. But in general, it was assumed that this was some sort of marketing stunt for the band KFC Murder Chicks, which stands to good reason because they seem to be at the center of a lot of these different loose threads. Oh, what a weird, like, way to advertise your band. I don't know. It also doesn't quite seem like it, it took off. <laughs> yeah. Now, ultimately, this was not confirmed until April 27th of 2020 when The Spectrum, which was a student newspaper for University of Buffalo, shared an article. This article was an interview with DJ Roswell, who we mentioned earlier. In the interview, the interviewer called Erratus an ARG and then asked why they had made it. 
The answer was, quote, I didn't feel confident in the KFC Murder Chicks music itself. I also felt like it needed a gimmick to go along with it to make it more well known and figured a spooky internet mystery or an ARG would do the trick. So essentially, DJ Roswell is solidifying that this just started out as fun. It was an ARG kind of internet mystery contrived thing. So we have, this is another one of those mysteries where we actually have a resolution now, which is very nice. So he started it as fun, but the reason why this kind of faded away was because it was evolving in a way that he didn't like. He didn't like how it was being spun up as this big evil yes, thing. It seemed so, like it was something evil. Right. And and it also like with that, are you going to be held criminally accountable for whatever yeah. this turns into? So it's nice to do another mystery that kind of has a resolution where the person that created it came forward years later and said, nah, you know what? Like, I didn't think our music was strong enough on its own. So I wanted to have some story, some lore, some mystery to go with it. And it certainly worked and it certainly took off in a way that uh, they never anticipated. But they also dropped off, like I said, because it spiraled out of control, but they also got a full time job. So life happened. Huh. Yeah, I mean, it just seems pretty straightforward. Boom, mystery solved type of situation. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Weird to just be like, I don't know, like that for a band, I get like you want to, you know, popular and everything, but weird to like take the whole route of disappearances and stuff. Right. I mean, you already put yourself in the realm of, um, I don't know, uh, very interesting mysteries that are pretty, uh, I guess, nefarious, right? Like, yeah, it's pretty, pretty dark. Like you put yourself in a, in a dark part of the Internet at that point. Yeah. So deep that you're back in real life. <laughs> yeah. I mean, here's the thing. Uh, you know, however you feel about this, it was so sticky and was so curious that many still wonder to this day about the Erratus Project and if it is still real. Now, DJ Roswell assures everybody that it is not real, that this is not a real thing. It is in completely in invented in his mind. And it's also worth mentioning that the KFC Murder Chicks was a project by DJ Roswell where the band members were actually characters. So it stands to reason that he not only makes music, but wants to tell a story. Right. And is, the it's band a more members unique. are characters. I mm. get it. Like, yeah, it's trying to make something unique with, you know, within the music industry. Yeah. But regardless, I mean, it makes people wonder if something like this could exist or if it does exist whether it is erratus or something else i think what could have happened is that he was tickling at something that felt real enough that it could be plausible mm -hmm. and i wouldn't doubt that for a second it's totally possible that uh there's an algo out there that has uh, a sinister purpose you know uh i i look it's most definitely out there right i mean it's the there's a lot of people on this planet so they're going to be doing whatever they mm -hmm. want to do to some extent and, and like a terrible ARG isn't the worst thing. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. That's probably something that's possible. Well, kind of in closing, I want to, I want to close a few loops that we kind of talked about before. So we know now that the KFC murder chicks band was filled with characters all behind this DJ Roswell person. But remember that address talked about Corbin, Kentucky, and we have, again, a reference of KFC in the band name. Well, Corbin, Kentucky is actually the home of the original KFC. Uh, so that's interesting. We have the Todd Ellsworth YouTube channel that also still had a few handful of uploads in 2019 and 2020, but they no longer mention Erratus. Hmm. And then when it comes to Exer Herb, whoever this person is, if they were someone not who wasn't DJ Roswell, they're still missing. So there are people that are still searching for that individual. I tend to think that if this was a DJ Roswell creative invention, that they would be the that the, the, they were X or Herb. And that's why the two yeah. channels were similar because it was right. him, right? Yeah, no, that makes perfect sense. I mean, I'm assuming in the way that like it was created and, and the, the way it was like written, all that kind of stuff that they lined up together. There was no, there wasn't anything to kind of say otherwise. Yeah. But just like a good movie, this kind of has, it has a little bit of a cliffhanger um, oh. where while we did button up the topic at hand. I was about to say, it seemed like it buttoned up pretty well. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's a couple subreddits, right? We have the Errata subreddit and we have another user on Reddit named Father Cinnamon. Sin with an S. 
and they found evidence that the ARG could be continuing either on a different path or by a completely different person. Exer Herb was also investigating another internet mystery slash ARG called Hecate Station, and through that, the Father Cinnamon user found another strange YouTube channel called Robin Laid an Egg 2008. But these posts are from 2020, so it's unknown if this ARG mystery continued, or whether it continued on the public forum, or on this channel, or on this old YouTube channel. It's, it's hard to know, because these posts are now deleted. But it seems like whatever's going on here is that there's the the crackings, the openings of a door, the, of yeah, another mystery. Of like a different mystery. <laughs> right. Like this has evolved, gone to the next level, or that someone has commandeered it. I don't know. But that had only just begun, I think, before it kind of got wiped. So it, it got kindled and, and undone. But I don't know, man. This this was really interesting. And it, and it was nice. I, I'd been thinking about this over the last few episodes. It would be nice to explore another one that has a resolution, you know? It's the holiday yeah. season. We don't always want to be shaking in our no. boots. And I kind of <laughs> like that. I mean, it look, it was a it was one of those things of like, how is this even possible that people are disappearing and like, you know, go back to it's not being investigated in some way, shape, or form, or like how is it being covered up, et cetera? Cause like disappearances are like a big thing. And how do we mm -hmm. know what people aren't just deleting accounts and whatnot? And uh it's because it's not, you know, it's technically not real. Yeah. It's interesting, man. I, I think this ARG does something very interesting to me that a lot perhaps don't, right? There's a lot of like cool ARGs in concept, but not very deep ones. And what this one does, whether promote is music or not, I think it makes you ask some very interesting questions. I mean, obviously, we we talked about a few thought experiments along the way. And, um, mm -hmm. you know, I think that this kind of topic is more relevant today than ever. And, you know, in 10 years from now, it will continue to be relevant. Uh, it, it's just very interesting. And it's nice to know that there isn't necessarily in our face a sinister algorithm out there hunting people down. But that we know interesting of. nonetheless. Yeah, that we know. <laughs> of. But interesting, at least darkly interesting nonetheless. Yeah. I mean, we're like, what a what a start to it. You know what I mean? Talking about just disappearances of people getting fired off of it and right and like, then that Ooh. tape gun like such a yeah, small was, like, detail so you know? weird it was so specific i don't know like, it was it was ugh. very hard to piecemeal it all together in a way of just like how why would they even you know but i mean it came mm -hmm. it came to a conclusion came to a conclusion well fredo this has been the erotis mystery i'm really happy that we got to cover this one and it's been nice to kind of dip our toes back into the internet yeah uh, but yeah everybody task force at home i hope you have a happy holidays we'll see you again next monday for another mystery but uh you know just another reminder here at the end if you want to send some task force merch out to your friends and family for the holidays you got two days as of the release of this episode december 15th is going to be the cutoff for making sure that the shipments get to you by the holiday season uh, but otherwise yeah we'll see you right back here on another mystery monday next week fredo hell yeah catch y'all later